Ladies and gentlemen out there in Oregon, it's Ronnie Bennett. Once every two weeks, we check in with her and see what's happening with old farts. Uh, with what? Old farts. Old farts. Okay. Yes. Yeah. She has a blog called "As Time As Time Time Goes By." Dot net, and yes. it's a Without blog. Without ads in front of it. No. No, a, no, no ads. It's not no ads. Song. It's just time goes. Time by. goes by. Dot net, and uh, uh, it's all about getting older, and it's really very good. I mean, even if you're not getting older, uh, you want to read it to see what life's going to be like soon. Anyway, how are you, Ronnie? <laughs> I'm all right. It's been a rough week. It's been really, really not a good week since. Not a sorry. not a good week. week. Well, wait a minute. It's only month. It's only two. Well, let's see Tuesday. No, I meant all of last week. Oh, I see. Okay. It's been it's been a very very rough week. I have a, a drug that I have to take before I eat every meal. Yeah. It replaces the enzymes that my body doesn't make anymore because blah blah blah. You the know, pancreas. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. And um. So, uh, you know, this is, uh, I forgot to turn off my email program, and it's going to keep doing this to us. <laughs> anyway, don't worry about it. Um, and uh, and if I, I, I can't eat if I don't take it, because it causes, food then causes pain. Yeah. So I was running out. I've been taking it for two years since the surgery. Yeah. I just take it in, and they renew it, you know? Right. If we're out of refills, they call the place for me and they get it done at right. the pharmacy. This time, my insurance company wanted to know something about the dosage because I get a lot of pills. Because even if I decide at 10 o'clock to have a snack, I have to take a pill before a right, snack. Right, <clears throat> So you use more than three a day. So sometimes. And this went on for a week that they would call a medical place and nobody would ever get back to them or not with the right information. And then I tried calling several days, a little, and somebody would say, I will track down the right person and have them call the pharmacy. It never happened. And my, meanwhile, the pills are disappearing. What do I do? Stop eating? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And uh, so um, by Friday, it still hadn't been resolved. Uh, which means I gave up any snacks I wanted because I needed the pills for main meals. And finally, yesterday, I got the right thing. I called, I, I, I called the, there's such a thing as a patient complaint center. I'm pretty sure they call it something nicer than that, but that's what it means. Yeah. <clears throat> and I called there, and the lady there took care of it. I don't know why I didn't think of that to begin with. <laughs> yeah. So, so I got my pills. Well, there, there, um, there are all kinds yeah. of things that they do, like pre-authorizations for certain drugs and, uh, you know, whatever. And it's a pain in the ass. All you want to do is have your medicine that will take care of your particular problem. You know, what can you do? Yeah. And I still have these body aches and pains that wear me out by, you know, noon or 1 o'clock. So. Yeah. Well, I, I get up and I'm tired and I'm tired for the rest of the day. So, you know. Uh, you know, but uh, I don't have a reason for that. You do. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, there's a reason that I named a couple of, of blog posts of uh, cancer, chemo, or old age. Uh, things go wrong and you don't know what caused it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And, and I'm sure that happens even if you're not doing chemo and such, just... Old bodies, you know, getting tired and things stop working right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, let's, let's uh, you said you had a few things you wanted to talk about today. Yeah, I'm just, I wanted to ask you about, um, I'm going to say it my way, uh, Trump's racist speech at the four women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see all that? Uh, yes, yes. I. It's pretty hard to believe, isn't it? Um, and he said, you know, the, the next one, after everybody complained, he said, yeah, but a lot of people agree with me. <laughs> no kidding. No, you know what? No, here, here's what he says. He always says that lots of people agree with me, and that's his justification. But lots yeah. of people agreeing with you isn't that all people agree with you. <laughs> right. You know? And it's, it's he always, also, he, years you know, be before. change when a president, depending on how a president repeats thing, presents things and repeats things, mm -hmm. also sets the tone of how we speak. And, if, you know, everybody speaks like Trump now. What do you mean? We're all speaking, Trump we're all speaking fluent, we're all speak, speaking fluent gibberish? Yes. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, the thing is that, that uh, uh, to begin with, they say, well, no, he's not a racist. He has a black person in his cabinet. <laughs> I have a black friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? You have a black person in your cabinet? Okay, that makes you not racist. You know, when you're telling anybody the the racist trope of, why don't you go back where you came from? You know, I mean, I as a Jew, I even heard that when I was growing up from racist yes, kids. When we were young, and the go back to where you came from was very big in the '60s um, '60s civil rights movement. Yeah, well, OA, OAC said that it means I'll have to go back to the Bronx. Yeah. You know, I don't think he knew that three of those women were born here because he doesn't read. And it's not like when you're giving a speech, you say, hey, I was born in America, you know. Um, and I think he didn't know when he said that. I mean, how else would you say it? And the other one, how else would you the, say that? the other one, the Somalian, is, uh, is uh, a, a, a citizen of the United States of America. A citizen, yeah. So, I mean, you don't say that to somebody who's a citizen, you know? I mean, That's right. I mean, if, how would they feel any different than if somebody stopped you or me in the street and told us to go back to where we came from? We're here. What do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, these, this woman came from Somalia at age 12, I think, because her yes. parents were fleeing the country. Yes. You know, uh, I, I, just such a dumb man and just so terrible and so racist and so white. You yeah, know. that's what it is. So white. Yes. I mean, I, you know, I feel almost ashamed to be white. You know, you get that way with people like him, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, he's he's bespeaking uh, a a he's really this is the most racist he's ever gotten. This is overt. Yes. Okay. I this think is overt. This is way across the line. Unless that guy, what his name is, Kevin McCarthy, who's um, I can't remember if he's a senator or a representative who was defending him this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I I couldn't even see how they could defend him. Uh, but they were all white people up there, <laughs> you know. True. And to a white person, that isn't racist, <clears throat> you know, except to this white person and that white person. Uh, the other thing is that Kellyanne Conway, the White House, some, I don't know what she does there. Uh, she she does doesn't something. either. Um, she defied the subpoena that was issued in regard, you know, her being accused of Hatch Act, mm -hmm. um, of, of, of not... You know what I mean. Um, she didn't show up for a, to, for her subpoena yesterday at the committee, and she said that Trump told her not to go. And there's going to be a vote probably this late today. This is Tuesday. We're recording this Tuesday, the yeah. 16th, uh, to hold her in contempt of Congress. They always do this. These Democrats. I'm really tired of it. That. Uh, if, if you're convicted of, um, of defying a subpoena, mm -hmm. it requires a jail sentence. And, I, and the Democrats just have just let everybody go. They don't do anything. It's a slap on the wrist. It's not even a slap on a wrist. What does anybody in the Trump administration care about being um, you know, condemned by Congress but keeping their job? <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's going to happen again. I just don't get why they don't do anything. I understand why the Republicans who are afraid of Trump condemning them don't do it. I mean, it makes them chicken and I don't like them, but um, but I don't get the Democrats. Well, you know, God forbid he should win the next election and they have to deal with him. And that's what they think. They don't want to have to deal with Trump. They're afraid he is such a bully that they're afraid of being bullied by him. Who? Who's the they you're the, talking the, the about? The Republicans that you're talking about. Oh, no, they just don't. Yeah, I mean. Uh, you know, they don't want they, they, they don't want to be bullied by. I understand that, that. that, But my. I don't understand the Democrats, though. Yeah. Makes no sense that they, they vote to condemn somebody and then go on with normal business. They never arrest them. They never hold a trial. They never put them in jail. Yeah. And I don't understand. I don't. You know, I, they would. I don't understand it either, uh, but you know, I mean, that that that's the ineffectiveness of the Democrats. I mean, 
That's what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> it's a party. It's a party of the wimpy, you know. Um, I guess so. I guess so. And I don't know. I got to say to the Democrats, what's worse, being like a Republican and falling into lockstep with Trump, or being a Democrat and being so weak against Trump that you don't go ahead and say, "Okay, Kellyanne, you're spending the night in jail." Well, the result is the same, isn't it? Or close enough? Well, pretty much. It's exactly what Trump is counting on. Yeah. You know. So. Um, I want to lighten this up a little bit. Okay, let's lighten it up. These are our daily troubles and tribulations of our country. But a couple of nights ago, mm -hmm. uh, you had a blackout. Yes, we did. Um, you were far enough away, I think it didn't affect you at all. We home. didn't even know it had happened. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. If, you, if you had TV on, there was what looked like a 14-year-old girl reporting from near Rockefeller Center mm -hmm. where everything was dark. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, this happens when you get old. Even people up until about 30 look like they're high schoolers. You know? Yeah, right. And this girl is is out there, and she right behind her in the shot was Radio City Music Hall. Yeah. And she kept referring to it as Radio City Hall. Just every time she did, if I was only half paying attention, I would sit up. She's probably not just from New York. The name of that place. <laughs> <laughs> and then she pointed across the street to the building right across the side street. I think it's 51st from uh, from Radio City. Yeah. And um, and she said, and that's 30 Rock. No, it's not. No, 30 Rock is. <laughs> 30 Rock is on the other side of Radio City Music Hall. And it just it just makes you Wait crazy. Wait a minute, now, is she working for NBC, this woman? Yes. Then she should know where fucking 30 Rock is. She has to go to work there every day. <laughs> oh, just thank God. Listen, but about the blackout. Yeah. It. Well, I was amused and interested to know that it occurred on the same day that the 1977 blackout That's happened. That's correct. Do you remember that blackout? Uh, let me see here. Or was I was I here? I'm trying to remember. Was I here? I guess I was still here. Yes, of course I was. I'm going to recount that day to you. Oh, I remember it because we were somewhere and we were waiting for our lights to go back on. And we were the last one with the last department for the lights to go back on. Well... That's not what the story is about. Oh, okay. What's the story about? Um, I was sitting at home, uh -huh. um, you know, doing whatever at the computer, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the computer went off and the Wait radio went Wait on. We have a computer then? I'm trying to remember if we had a computer then. No, we didn't. So this is a later blackout. Oh, the later blackout, the one where you lived in the apartment that you had to go downstairs for, right? Where I spent the oh. evening... <clears throat> well, you d wait, let me tell the story. Okay, go tell the story. But whatever the year was, whichever blackout. Yeah. I'm, I'm really sorry it wasn't the same day. <laughs> 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 um, it, I'm just sitting there at home on the computer. The computer stops. The radio stops. And the lights I had on stopped. And I knew what it was. We've had blackouts before. Mm -hmm. So I, who knows how long they'll last. So I checked the fridge, and I went to the corner bodega and bought up bread and other things that didn't need to be refrigerated if it lasted a long time Yeah. Uh, before they were all gone and mm -hmm. brought those home. And now what? Nothing works, and we're so accustomed even then to our electronics. So then there's a knock at the door. And I've forgotten the order, so I can't doesn't matter. I go to the door and I open it up and there's Stanhope. Your friend. The man Stan. that I once yeah. worked with and dated for a long time. Mm -hmm. And he was living in Brooklyn then, which I hadn't known. And he said it was a long walk back to Brooklyn. Could he stay with me for the duration? Sure, come on in. So he comes in and we're getting settled and there's another knock at my door. And I go there and it's you. <laughs> and you know, now I have to preface this with um, I have always been very care careful to keep the men in my life separate from one another, <laughs> even if we're no longer dating, mm -hmm. but friendly. And there was nothing I could do. I mean, you said, I live way up on, you know, I don't know, 477th Street or something, and can I come in and stay? Okay, come in. Stanhope, Alex, Alex Stanhope. 
Well, you guys started telling. He, you have to know that he's a television news producer who's produced some of the most famous things you've ever seen on Cronkite's News, and your radio talk shows. Mm -hmm. Well, now you're telling. Both of you are telling war stories and trying to one up each other. <laughs> that stopped. When it got nighttime, we went out and walked around the neighborhood just to see what it was like. And yeah. had ice cream at that place was giving away their ice cream because what are you going to do? You can't freeze it anymore. Right. And uh, <clears throat> and we did that and came back. I got tired. You guys are telling war stories again. So I went in the bedroom and went to bed. I wake up a normal time later, and you guys are still up telling war stories. Yeah, I had a nice time with Stan Hope. I had a nice time with him that night. <laughs> I really did. I, I remember it always. <laughs> well, I wasn't so sure you guys should both be in the same room together. Well, we, we got along okay, you know. And we didn't. I don't think we even <laughs> talked about you. So, you know, I mean. Uh... That's what I was worried about. <laughs> well, that was, um, that was about, when was it? Nine, uh, when was it? Uh, it had to be like 2000. Two or something like that, because I was working. I was working I, over. No, I was working. I thought it was 1977, but you're right. I wouldn't have had a computer yet. Yeah, right. Uh, the one in the one that happened, uh, the uh, 77. Uh, I I don't think we were together any longer, and I don't know where I was, but I no, was, I was outside the city. Maybe I was at my friend Shecky's. I can't remember, and I. Uh, I kept calling around trying to figure out if our apartment had gotten its lights back because they said they were restoring, you know, and they were doing it in a circle, an inward spiral circle. And you know where the end of the spiral was? <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> My apartment was the last apartment to get its electricity. Ah, uh, well. Yeah. It's always hot when blackouts happen, too, so you're just miserable. Yeah, well, this one, I don't know what they still they haven't said what caused it. But it was a bunch of relays that went to protect each other. Or oh, something. I don't know what caused it. I, I I wouldn't understand if they told me. I'm sure, you know. Yeah. Um, also, have you heard this story that more than a million people have signed up to storm Area 51? Yes, I saw that. Yes. <laughs> we need a laugh in these times, you know. Well, it turns out the guy who started this little. <laughs> Let's go get these he people. He started it as a joke. Well, he started it as a joke, and finally when he saw it was being taken too seriously, he said, it's only a joke, folks. You know, because <laughs> the, government was, but get, get, the government was ready to muster up the army and the, whoever well, to guard the I place. Read, um, they said that the army, the army was there, you know, and, and prepared for them. Um, and it's supposed to be just an Air Force training area, so... You know, I don't know anything about how those rumors got started or anything. But one news story I read made reference to those things in the sky that pilots have been seeing in the past month or so. Yeah. And so there must be aliens at Area 51, I think, is what that person was trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> so, think there are aliens at, at Area 51? Uh, 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 from what I understand, the only thing about Area 51 and the reason it was so secretive is that they were doing some secret work there, but it didn't have to do with aliens. I don't think so. I don't think so either. I mean, you know. You know how easily everything about uh, all of the, the political stuff in the gets um, uh, it gets leaked if it's if it's worth knowing. Yeah. All this gets leaked. Right. If there were aliens at Area 51, it would have been leaked by now. Well, here's decades. here's the thing. Uh, um, I have always felt that the belief in UFOs is very egotistical. You know, this is a rather vast universe. We are but a mere speck in that universe. And the notion that we are so important that they found us and they are coming to see us is really quite egotistical. The fact well, is, they would probably look at us, us and go, hmm, those are roaches, aren't they? You know. I you mean, don't know because you don't know what aliens are like. Well. Maybe aliens look like roaches. Well, you, we, but we also have a concept of what an alien is and that they have some kind of uh, biological similarity to us. And they don't. 
uh, they would they uh, we so why they, should they there is the life elsewhere universe. in the universe but it may be plant life or it may be sea life or it may be algae or bacteria or whatever but it may not be what we've evolved to maybe we were the most evolved species in the universe i we don't know oh, that that be a shame oh, well God. if we are if we are the universe is in for a bad time yes it is. you know i mean that's pretty terrible um but uh, I just, I thought more than a million people, they must be really tired of politics. <laughs> well, you know, I was watching, I was watching this thing they did on the BBC in England called The Planets, in which they deal with each of the planets and what, what life might be there and what life might not be there and how it was formed, and when it was formed and all of that. And they're talking in terms of four billion years ago. <laughs> and I'm going, I am such an insignificant speck in the overall picture and so is everybody else sitting on this big blue marble okay that we it's, should it's what it's what uh michael tyson what yeah. is his full name michael he's yeah. got three yeah. names and is we are all stardust isn't that it, lovely it, well we we are probably we are for sure yeah but isn't that a lovely way to put it yeah yeah we are uh, all stardust yeah well, you know, maybe that's what we go back to is being stardust. I think there, I was wondering the other day if there's a little corner of the universe where I belong and will be comfortable after I go. Well, it might be. If there were such a thing. We don't know. know. Let us know, will you? <laughs> as, as everybody has said to let every dying know. person you know, ever. <laughs> you know, let, let us know. Send, send back a message of some sort. You know. Well, you remember, you remember, table, you remember you know. what Houdini's wife did. She went around. They went went around for years debunking uh, mystics. You know, people who would say, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I, see, I see your uh, your relatives. Yes, they're up there. They love you. They're sending a message." And then, then somehow Houdini would prove them to be fake. And so when he died, she he before before he died, they agreed that if he could possibly get some kind of message back to her, he would. And he never did. No, okay. Not. Uh, but for years, she would go to these seances <laughs> and continue to disprove them. Uh, and, and none of them ever, you know, all of, all of them were debunked completely. But if Houdini couldn't get back here, the world's greatest escape artist, I don't know if we, got an, if we have that ability. You know. Well, you see, he'd spent his whole career escaping rather than returning to whatever he I see that's from. a very oh you're so good you're so good at that oh my 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 yeah but you know I mean he uh, he I think he kept trying to reach his mother because he loved his mother and his mother had died and they were constantly going to these seances and they you know some guy behind a curtain going boo making noises and things like that and and literally disproving them and they hated him they they got to the point where they wouldn't even do a seance Who for hated him. It? the the, uh, the 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 mystics the seance doers you know whatever you call them crystal ball gazers uh Don't know. So Don't know. On, yeah uh but anyway so uh uh uh, you're, you're feeling okay? Yeah, I've got these pain problems I'm still working on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wear me out, so. And I'm letting my hair grow rather than, <coughs> excuse me, shave it down. But, um, you know, there's a big part of me that loves that I don't have to do anything with hair in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you also can't go. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I never, I don't know that I ever did that. You always that. wore your hair kind of short. Um, but but there's still, it still takes work. Yeah. And um, there's a, every Tuesday, uh, my blog post is from a story that a reader has written and mm -hmm. sent in. Yeah. And today's is by Ann Burek Weiss, who lives in New York City in the village. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's called My Comfort Zone. And she's talking about as she gets older. She only pretty much does what makes her comfortable. Yeah. And I would, I think that it's a wonderful thing to let go of having to do your hair. And of course, all bald men know that you don't have to comb your hair. Well, anymore. well, certainly, certainly, we will put on the list of uh, of good things about cancer. That. Okay. <laughs> I got chemo, and you won't have to do your hair anymore. 